Hi ladies, we are back and I'm going to be doing a Tussie Messy tutorial for Shadi of Creating with Details and <clears throat> this tutorial is going to be a kit. Um, the first thing you're going to be getting, of course, is a cone and this beautiful napkin. Now, um, I'm going to design this one just a little bit quite different than the rest of the Tussie Messies that I've done in the past. I've done Tussie Messies. Um, I always put my little signature touch with the wings. Um, and then this one, I'm just going to do it a little bit different. Um, so the first thing I want to do, I want to wrap the napkin around the cone. All right, a little bit off center here. And if you haven't checked out Creative Detail Store, please do so. She's got... Um, tons of new stuff in the store and I know she's been working on loading up more so just make sure you stop by there and check out all the new stuff and so we're just going to glue this down on and I just went right on around the edge of this napkin and I'm going to pull it really really tight around this cone and make sure it's nice and snug in there I'm going to trim around the base and I'm going to make sure I save all this. Okay. So just make sure you save all this beautiful piece of napkin because you're going to most definitely be using it again. As you're cutting around the bottom edge of your cone, just be careful. And I'm just going to keep on cutting. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to lift this up just a bit on the bottom edge. Glue that down to the edge here of our cone. This is the per perfect time that if you are missing a little spot, just make sure you get it. we have this in our cone. So in your kit you're going to get this 13 by 13 piece of avocado colored lace and you're also going to get another uh, 13 by 13 piece of this ivory uh, mesh lace. And we're going to take the first layer and we're going to apply this. It's a stretchy lace so we're going to apply that to our cone on top of the napkin and I'm just going to go right on the edge here Make sure I have my little finger here, my pink finger. Make sure you stretch that really good. And just go around that edge. That's all you're going to be doing here. Pulling tight so that it adheres really good to that napkin um, and you're going to be overlapping that of course. I'm going to trim this little piece here. Get my little spatula out here. A lot of ladies were asking me about um, the Tussie Messy, and I had sold out completely immediately as I posted it. So um, I talked to Shadi, and she said, um, yeah, we can do a Tussie Messy kit. So I have jumped in, and I'm going to be designing this one for her because I know she's quite the busy lady with her orders. 
And the good thing about this um, lacy fabric is that it is stretchy, so you can shape it up and mold it up to fit your cone. And see, I'm gonna. Typically, I always leave enough for wings. Not this time, ladies. Not this time. So, and I'm gonna stretch it so that it goes over the edge here. So I'm gonna pull and stretch. Make sure that I get that completely around that edge. Get the assistance of your little spatula, press down on that edge. And then all this little extras here will cut. So we're going to make this one a little bit different than <clears throat> the ones that I typically make. Okay. Now you can do one or two things. You can tuck that in there just like that. Or you can just trim it, which is what I'm going to do because I'm going to take that napkin and I'm going to give it a lining inside. I'm just going to go again right around that edge. have that going on with here. Now you may or may not get the um, scallop edge of this lacy ivory fabric. Um, and if you do take it to your advantage and just you know use it for the top here and trying to work that out in your your technique here. So I'm gonna use that since I, I got to this part of the not everyone's going to get that though because these are the actually the outside edges so I was lucky to get that piece <clears throat> to probably stretch it around, maneuver it here and there. It should quite flow in. When you're working with mesh or these lacy types of fabric, it's really hard sometimes because um, the glue seeps through it and you get it all over your fingers. So that's why these little um, silicone fingers and spatulas, I call them, I call it my finger, um, come in very handy so that you're not getting the glue buzz all over your fingernails like I have right now. Um, so I try to minimize that by using these little 
gadgets. So when you get around here, you just want to try to work that in and then trim any extras. this one over and it may you know I might have little gaps here and there but it'll work I'll pull that up that way so the scallop may or may not work for your advantage it all depends so I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pull down here. As you can see, I'm pulling down here. <clears throat> Holding it in place with my hand so that I can stretch that all the way around. Again, you got to make sure you tighten that up really good so that it's not um, saggy. So it's important you get that really good 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 stretch so see right here where it meets that's where I'm going to end and I'll lift this up here I'll move it out of my way and glue that down and see where this was overlapping on the um, it didn't actually go all the way around but that's okay what I'm going to do is that's going to be my back part um, of my tussie and then I'm going to lift it here. I'm holding it in place again, making sure I have it really nice and pulled so that it's not saggy. And I'm going to start applying <clears throat> my glue, pulling. So it's not so saggy. And see the little avocado color is peeking out that lacy mesh fabric and it looks really gorgeous and I'll just uh, see how I have it here I'm gonna make sure I get it really good in there refuel all my hot glue gun here and I'm telling you ladies if you don't have a sure bonders glue gun you must get one these glue guns are amazing they're awesome um, they are really really um, a lot safer I would say than the um, ad tech so I am a firm believer of this uh, glue gun and I can't tell you um, how many times I have been very badly burnt with the ad tech glue gun so all right, so now you have this, and here we're going to pull this in here, just like so. Get it all nice and tight. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, my family just arrived from their little adventure today. Glue my bottom. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to make sure I get, and I'm just applying a generous coat of the glue. I'm not putting a huge glob, just kind of like doing a small. of it and I'm just doing that so that I can get these edges a little bit more covered up so then we have that now here back here what we're going to do is I'm going to trim it up just a little because we do have an overlapping, and I'm 
probably gonna actually I'm gonna just gonna do that and then see how I bent it down a little pleated it down that way I have that scallop meeting this scallop here and I'm gonna use that as a guideline for my back of my tussie messy just give it a small little pleat So now we have that going on with our tussie messy. Move these things aside. And I do apologize, my family. So came. that extra little piece of your napkin, you're gonna have this little corner here, and it's really cute. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold it just like so and cut a straight line. This is gonna be the inside of our um, cone, the lining. save that for something else so you should get something like that now it's probably a big time it's big but you're going to make sure you have the good side facing you inside the cone and this is the back we need that because we have a little pleat there if you happen to have the scallop part and I'm going to use this as a guideline to butt it up to the edge of my cone like that okay so, <clears throat> that is a guideline. And <clears throat> now I'm going to go right around the edge of my cone and apply the rest of this napkin. Just around that edge. And then give it a nice little lining So the edge of the napkin with the edge of the cone and just keep going around. And then all the extras, I'm going to trim it off. You're going to need your sewing needle because um, for your next piece we're going to be sewing. So go ahead and grab your sewing needle. Now I'm going to go ahead and just glue down the seam here. Just like so. Use your little finger in your spatula. <clears throat> now. sewing needle and my thread I always cut a huge piece because that way I don't have to and I always use like quilting thread because it's a lot thicker um, especially when you're gathering and pulling here Slip it off. Get that ready. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab this here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do um, a little small running stitch in the inside to gather it up and to pull it tight. And it might be just a whip stitch. Whip stitch I find to be a lot quicker. Right. So we're just going to go around the edge of this na inside napkin and then we're going to pull it together and seal that up. Have a little thing like that, pull it tight, hold it in place, bring your needle through. The lock stitch. ahead and tie this up because we're going to be using the needle again for the next process and you're going to be getting about a yard of this next trim. Okay so there's my needle and then that's the inside of my cone. I'm just going to kind of tuck it in like that. See that? Okay. So for this next process um, you're going to get this beautiful trim and as you can see it has two sides to it. I'm going to go and run and cut right in the center of it because we're going to use this mesh. Now this is something I did with um, my, I call it my Creating with Detail Slay and I have not been able to load that video. For some reason I'm having, I was having problems with iMovie and I couldn't load it so um, my husband's trying to get it it's been going on for almost two weeks now that I haven't been able to load it but all right so we're gonna go right smack in the middle it doesn't matter if you mess up that mesh because we're gonna be cutting around that see what I mean. All right. So once you have your two sides cut, you see this mesh around the scallops. We're going to cut that around. You're going to make little, they're like little tri triangle cuts. I think the triangle cut is quicker than sitting there and try to do every little scallop. You're going to do that to both sides. Okay. So once you have both sides cut up and you've gone in and cut out the inside of the trim, um, you're going to have something that looks like this. Now I have two pieces. Now I took my needle and I did a whip stitch across one side of that <clears throat> trim and you get a beautiful little dangle trim like that. Now we're going to start in the back and as you can see I still have my needle attached to my um, my lace here and we're going to start right where that pleat we had and we're going to little feel for the edge of our cone and I'm going to start gluing it in. Again this is where um, your little spatula or finger will come massively handy. Um, and See I can still pull and gather and again I'm going to go touching for that edge and applying this lace to it. So many ways you can make a tussy mussy. You can make a tussy mussy out of, you know, scrapbook uh, paper. You can make it out of doilies. Um, 
there's so many things you can make it out of and it's always pretty interesting how you see the different variations and they're very beautiful um, to have so all right yeah I've seen various um, variations of tussies and I it's it just never seems to amaze me how beautiful they are there's so much you can do with them here too tight right there so we're just going to gather it by hand and we're going to think of doing a double layer of this trim because it's so beautiful and it gives it a really nice, unique look to it. perfect little pleat okay so now you have that going on I just go webs trim right there so you have that going on with your tussie messy and here's the back keep note of the back and we'll glue this right here that and then what I was thinking and I want to see if it works we'll see grab these two ends and I'm going to do another whip stitch on that other end and we're gonna probably do a double All right whip. ladies so we have a lot of gorgeous stuff going on with here and I've already applied that there and I did another running stitch on the other side of that trim and what I'm thinking about doing is again starting in the back Making our, making sure our right sides. I'm gonna start in the back, and I'm gonna go on top of this one, just like so, like that. Okay. So again, we're gonna go right smack on top of the other one that we just laid down, and I'm gonna stretch this out a little so I have enough. And I'm gonna go right in there. 
So again, we're just going right on top of the previous layer. Now make sure you move your gathers in. We get good gathering. Work your way all the way to the back. Sure, you get those gathering in really good. And that'll go across. All right, awesome. So you're going to need to cut that in a half and then use it one on top of the other, just like that. with the scallops on the opposite side of each other. All right, we have the clue webs, cut our thread. Now, you'll have something that looks like that, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little beautiful trim, and that's going to go starting in the back. We've got to find our way to the back right here. And that's going to go just like that, covering up that edge. Make sure you pull it out so you can cover up that edge really good. So that's going to go like that. But before we do that, because I, what I want is I want that to stick out, we are going to put this trim. So this is going to go, you're going to get an 18 inch piece of this one though. Let's find our back. Where's my back? Right here. So we're going to apply this one on top of this one, the bottom one. Make sure I make myself a little smaller so you can see. Okay, so we're going to go right smack, starting in the back. So layers upon layers. You're going to have to pull tight this one so it can go completely around your cone. Use your little spatula. Pull down on these. Work your way all the way around. <clears throat> like I said, there's so many different variations of making these beautiful Tussie Messies. It all makes them different. And it's so awesome to see the different variations of Tussie Messies. This little mesh, ruffled mesh, you're going to get about 18 inches. You will not get a full yard of it, just so that you know. I was talking to Shadi to see what we can add on this kit. So she sent a lot of gorgeous stuff. Now we're going to take this one and we're going to go again, starting in the back, which is right here. 
we're going to give it that edging look that we need to cover up our edges. And it also helps keep that top layer standing up. So I'm going right on top of the mesh ruffle trim that we just applied and I'm making sure it goes right smack in the middle. Right there. Pull it tight. Lay your pleats down. Get about a yard of this one. dry up before I snip it. You should have that going on. And then I'm going to slip this here. I'm going to try to be careful on these so that it doesn't fray. And then So you'll have that, let me sure. I've gone over your tussy messy. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is you're gonna get this beautiful, and I'm gonna make sure I have, this is the back. We know this is the back. That's our guideline. And I wanna make sure you're gonna get this beautiful applique, and we're gonna look at that. Doesn't that look really luscious? We're gonna go right there making sure it is aligned with my back and I'm going to hold it in place right there lift it up a little that way it's not moving on me and with the um, avocado colored lace that's popping out from this one mesh oh it is so gorgeous you just have to see it and once once you start working on it you'll see what I mean it looks really gorgeous and lush. Apply that up like that. And go back here. And I'm just going right smack in those edges. Outlining the outside edge of this applique. Just again outlining the outside, and that's all you really have to do.
so then you'll have that going on and then in your kit you're also going to receive this beautiful applique and that's going to go right align right to the front right there and I like to hold it in place so that way I have good placement and I don't lose my place lift that up a little go in and kind of grab the edges that needs to be adhered down. So then you have that. Okay. So then um, we are going to go and work on taking this leftover piece. Actually, I think you're going to get, we're going to go inside and clean up our edges there. We'll start in the back. I think you're gonna need about a yard and a half for this one, so I'll make sure I tell her. And rather you have enough than be short. Gorgeous gimp. I'm glad she brought more for the store. Okay. Still have some left over if she gives you about a yard and a half all right so you have that going in gorgeous and you're gonna get about I don't know three yards of that one oh, you know what I forgot we need to let's kind of We need to put, so on the two sides, we need to make sure that we release the two sides so that we can add a piece of seam binding to hold our tussie messy. So I do apologize for that. I carried away with myself. All right, so you're going to take a piece of this, about a yard of the seam binding that you're going to get. And just kind of crunch it, crinkle it not crunch it. Alright, so let's see. Make a little knot on each end so that way it's a lot more sturdier. And then just kind of glue it on each end. Go down. 
your gimp of choice to cover that edge. Alright, can you see it's popping out? And we're going to go to the other edge again. We're going to make a little knot. So then you'll have something to hang in and then you can tie a little um, thing on the top here. Okay. So that is that and then we are going to take the rest of your seam binding, which it should be about two yards because she's going to give you about three yards. Crinkle it, and then you're going to get um, some of this beautiful wool. And it's kind of pinkish with some creams in there. And I would say easily about a yard. You're going to get, you're not going to get this big chunk. That's my, that's my little stash. So we're going to go in and grab. And then join these two together. All right. Our little bow maker here. We're gonna go make a bow. So we're gonna put it in around. And this is from Deco Fun, the bow maker. It's really easy and fun to use this bow maker. And trust me, when it comes to these kind of things, it's good to have. I'm going to trim some of this here so that I can use for my tie off. Insert it in. Actually, I'm going to have her give you guys about. three yards of that, of the wool, because you're going to need it for the other part that we're working on. It's a cute little shabby chic bow. I'm going to put that aside. Now, we're going to get a piece of burlap and we're going to make a little bag. Okay, so um, you're going to get either a burlap bag already sewn up. What I did is I took a piece of a 15 inch piece of burlap and it comes in a roll like this, but you are going to get either a piece of burlap or um, a burlap bag. But I picked this one up, but you guys are going to get that already in your kit. And you can do a stitch cross there and an angle to make your bag straight, but I'm not going to do that this time. Um, and turned it inside out. I took my burlap, of course, I folded it in half and I did a stitch in the inside. Now I'm going to turn it inside out. Alright. And then I'm going to go ahead, fold this down. And if you have some of that textured snow, um, like from Prima, you can put a little bit of snow in here if you want. I'm not going to do that. You will have some of this left over, so I'm going to use that on the bag, like so, around. 
because you're going to have some of that left over. So I'm going to go pull these down. Again, use your little spatula. It's a lifesaver. doesn't this part here you know you can make it as fancy as you want or as simple as you want it doesn't have to be fancy it's up to taste um, as fancy or as simple as you want to be symmetrical. Well, it's a good thing it's kind of still dry. I mean, it's not dry all the way. I don't know about you ladies, but I just have a thing. Everything has to be aligned right. It drives me nuts if it's not. You guys know me, I don't mind rain. That I don't. Turn this off here. Um, and then you'll have this little cute bag. And the polyfill is not going to be included in your kit. Um, but I'm sure you should have some of that laying around. And just fill it up to taste. You can either leave it like that or tuck it in just like that. Make it like a little Santa bag, just like so. Or I'm going to take some of this. That's what I'm going to tell her to give you guys. Make sure you guys have plenty of this one. I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to tie a little bow. And I'm making sure some of that glory goodness is sticking out. Okay. And then you're going to get some flowers. And you can cut one of these out. Put some of these in there. going to take one of them and just kind of wrap it around the leaves and the spray and I'm going to tuck that in like that behind and glue it. Mm -hmm. I even have 
have some of this. that there in a bag just like so and I'm gonna cut this here hold on I'm gonna tie a knot and cut this little fuzz ball out that way we can add the flower piece to it so I'm gonna tie that there to my bag some more of these and tuck it in there so you'll have that okay so that's going to be tucked inside your little tussy mussy just like so. In your kit, you're going to have a pair of these lovebirds. Now, you also are going to get um, like these is because these here you have a little gash of blue and I want to cover that or sequence I want to cover that up so you're gonna get two of these to cover each side it's gonna make it look like that's her wings so you'll get two of these little beaded sprays kind of gave it a really cute look. Cover it up with a sequence. See that? It made a huge difference. Now, the little lovebirds, um, you're going to have this cute bow that we worked on. And you can do tuck that in there. I think I like that so even though we made a bow out of that um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her add more so there you go shoddy you need to give them at least five yards of this seam binding and I'm going to cut this out at least five yards of the seam binding and three yards of this pretty one so that they can make a little tassel the bird nest and you're not going to get a bird nest so you're just going to make a tassel bird nest I'm just going to take this little chunky thing here that I just made and it doesn't have to be all the same size but I just want you to tuck it in there and kind of hide the um, and you can have, if you have like little pieces of the fabric left over, you can even throw those in there. And I'm going to do that. It just adds volume and I'm just squinching it all up. See? And bring that in. Looks like Santa's bringing some laces to some, bot, some lucky crafter. That's what this is going to be called. Santa's lacy gifts so you take all your scraps that you had left over and you can just throw it on top of here cover up your little styrofoam or your polyfill sorry and you'll 
we'll take the little tassel that we made and we'll put it in there and we're gonna go straight across make sure we cover it up good and put that in just like so 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 Santa what he's bringing is a box or a bag full of laces to one lucky crafter look at that you want to receive a Santa gift full of laces. All right, and then the little birdies are gonna go smack inside. I'm just gonna put it just like that. So wouldn't you want to have a Christmas gift full of laces? I think we all would. That's gonna be tucked right in there. Just like so. is your Tussie Messy and then for the front um, I'm going to tell her add some extra of the seam binding so you get I'll tell her to add five yards of seam binding and I'm going to make a bow for the front and some flowers Five yards of seam binding and maybe four of this this one here. Put them together. We're gonna make a bow with our deco fun bow maker. Okay. side and we can adjust this and that's what I like about this deco fun is that I can adjust it just by pulling and tugging okay so we're gonna lift up I love this wool stuff this stuff is awesome if you go to Creative Detail Store, get some of this pink wool stuff. It's beautiful. I love it. All right, we're going to put that in two knots. <clears throat> and we're going to put that right in here. Colors, it's just so beautiful. It is gorgeous, ladies. I'm telling you, gorgeous. All right, so we're here. Make sure you're in the front, ladies. That's important. Look at that. Luff it out. some of these in. Kind of tweak them around. Let's see, maybe I can tuck this in here. Yeah, let's tuck that in there. So we're gonna tuck this one in there. Grab some of the wire. So many projects to do for Christmas, I feel like I'm not catching up. Alright. Oh, I wanted to wrap that up. Okay, let's just reuse this one. 
I just kind of wanted to twist and wrap the wires, make sure those are going in, straighten it out, tuck it in here, Let's glue those babies a little bit better. There's a Christmas bag full of laces and luscious things. All the things that us crafters want. So we're going to tuck that in there. Who wouldn't want a little gift bag like that, right? And then tuck it back in the Tussie Messy. And there you have it. That is the beautiful. And we probably, let's see. Yeah, we're not having that. Okay, so this is it. This is your Tussie Messy. So, if Shadi, if you're paying attention to my video, um, you're going to need this beautiful applique, this tiny little applique, um, a 13 by 13 inch piece of that. Um, avocado dyed lacy, a stretchy one, and a 13 by 13 of the ivory um, lace. And then you're going to need a napkin, and you're going to need a yard of this one. You're going to need five yards of the goldish seam binding, four yards of the wool, one spray of the little flowers, a 15 inch piece of burlap, um, or um, a little burlap bag that you might have. You're going to need two of these little things that you sent me. I didn't use a whole, so we're going to use two of these little spray thingies. Almost looks like wings. Um, and, um, you're going to need a yard and a half of this get trim and 18 inches of this ivory ruffled trim. And that there is your Prima Details Hussy Messy that I've created. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you have any questions, um, if you're interested in purchasing this kit, um, feel free to call Creating with Details um, and she will give you all the details and glories of this kit. Anyway, until next time, bye bye.